Hello and welcome to our short lecture on the hoof mechanism. This chapter will help us assessing the complex biomechanics of a hoof capsule and help us to better comprehend the effects of different modified horseshoes such as the Ekbar shoe. As we've already established, the flexible hoof capsule surrounds functionally and anatomically important structures of a distal limb in contact with the ground. Furthermore, by being part of a suspensory apparatus of the distal phalanx, it plays a major role in the transition of the forces that develop whenever the hoof strikes the ground. Right now, we want to have a closer look on how these developing forces and the reaction of the distal limb affect a regular and healthy hoof capsule. While doing that, we should keep in mind that in a horse with an approximate weight of 500 kg, one square centimeter of a solid surface of a hoof carries a weight of about 4 kg or respectively 400 Newton. First of all, the hoof capsule as a flexible structure will yield under the pressure on impact with the ground and mostly dissipate the attending cushion. This effect can be further aided with a gliding phase in which the hoof can decelerate steadily instead of jerking to a sudden halt. While the limb is loaded, the pressure affecting the distal interphalangeal joint is split between the distal phalanx and the navicular bone. As explained in an earlier chapter, the distal phalanx will now convert the pressure forces into tensile forces via its suspensory apparatus and transmit them toward the hoof wall. Thereby, all regions of a hoof which are in contact with the ground become crucial in the weight-bearing process. The transmitted forces will cause a certain distortion of a hoof wall, which is difficult to assess with a bare eye. As demonstrated by the colored lines, the proximal portion of a dorsal wall will be slightly retracted. On the other hand side, the heels are slightly spread and the sole concavity is flattened. The navicular bone on the other hand side presses onto the deep digital flexor tendon, which will thereafter compress the digital cushion and the frog. This redirects the transmitted forces as the cushion will press medial and lateral against the hoof cartilage. And the frog will press further distal against the hoof's bars and sole. These redirected forces will further support the earlier shown outward movement of the heels in mid-stance phase, support the flattening of the sole concavity and cause a slight broadening of the visible frog itself. As soon as the load ceases, as the horse starts to break over and the limb leaves the ground, the hoof will come back to its original shape. To avoid interference with this mechanism, we refrain from nailing this area of the shoe to the hoof capsule. Nevertheless, certain modified horseshoes, such as the Ekber shoe, can affect the hoof mechanism by prohibiting the heel movement to a certain degree. A prolonged treatment with these kind of shoes or any other kind of fixation of the heels can lead to contracted heels and cause severe lameness in horses. Thank you for your attention and interest.